Welcome to our video product demonstration of SP Safety, a digital workplace application from SP Marketplace. At SP Marketplace, we've developed a next generation set of workplace applications or business applications that are integrated together to provide a best practice workplace solution on top of Office 365. It provides a consistent approach for a user experience, how communications is done, your document and file structures, and how internal services are provided across the organization. You can purchase the entire digital workplace, or you can purchase individual components like SP Safety. So let's take a look at SP Safety as part of a digital workplace. SP Safety is an environmental health and safety application that provides you full automation and a next generation digital workplace portal for the EHS function. Our safety department portal includes incident tracking, observations, audits, and inspections, corrective actions linked to incidents and observations and audits, safety documents management, and we also track areas, and areas are could be assets, they could be work areas, and so on, so that you can track the history of uh, any safety activities or incidents around those areas, and we also provide for tracking of employee compliance, for training certifications, and those type of things. As a next generation portal, it actually has two roles uh, in the safety application. Uh, the first one is the safety staff. This is a portal where the safety staff actually works. Uh, it provides for collaboration uh, within the group, announcements, calendar, discussions, task tracking. Uh, it provides for full document management, safety regulations, reports, um, and safety-related documents and file organization. And then, of course, the core part of it is tracking and manage incidents, observations, and the actions that are corrective for those things. It also uh, provides uh, work activity management, such as uh, audits and inspections and service requests. And then finally, can also track employee compliance with safety certifications and so on. This is all within the safety staff portal, a place that the safety group can organize and run their function. A second portal which is available to employees as a self-service portal is part of the SP Safety application. It provides for safety communications, news items, announcements, events, frequently asked questions. It also provides a place that they can find documents uh, in a self-service type of approach where they can get to doc, uh, documents like policies, procedures, forms. And they can also from here submit uh, incidents, observations, and service requests or requests for service from the uh, safety department. It is all part of the Office 365 digital workplace and supports both uh, mobile on any device and anywhere, anytime access uh, as well. So let's take a look at a demonstration of the safety product. Okay, as we mentioned before, this is a next generation part of your digital workplace as a safety application. In this safety application, there is portals. Portals are where the safety team works out of, and you also have a self-service portal for employees. So if we take a look at, first of all, the portals here, uh, we see that the safety team, and this is a secured portal, only the safety team can get in here. You can see that it's actually a um, Office 365 group and can actually be accessed through Teams as well as a team. And you can control who has access of this. This is a portal that is um, secured to just the safety group. So there is a home page where you can have staff announcements between the safety staff. You can actually get to your team, um, group calendar, OneDrive, those type of things. There's uh, safety department news. There's a staff calendar. You can see uh, that we have team meetings and so on. Uh, we also down here have unassigned incidents, new observations that are coming in. So it's really a home page for all activities related to safety. Uh, it also is where you can get to, uh, for instance, adding a new incident, uh, looking and assigning incidents, 
uh, service requests, requests for things like training or uh, other things from the organization, uh, observations, which can be put in by the safety group or uh, by uh, the rest of the organization. And really the key thing here to a digital workplace is bringing in the rest of the uh, organization into the safety process and making it easy for the organization to not only um, have communications from the safety departments, but also to um, participate through observations. There's also action items. Uh, action items are actually the corrective actions related to incidents, observations, and audits. It also includes inspections. So these are your work items. Um, we have employee compliance, uh, a My Workspace knowledge base. There's actually a Power BI dashboard, and then uh, you can also access the employee portal uh, on here as well. And you can see that there is a menu structure. The menu structure is actually audience-based, so depending on what your role in the safety department is, you may have uh, different menu items. But at the core of this is our incident tracker. Um, we also have uh, the ability to add news items and portal content. In fact, it actually can push up to the intranet site as part of our digital workplace uh, a lot of the news items and roll up. Uh, you can track contacts, knowledge base, um, and as we mentioned, action items, service requests, and so on. So the menu is actually uh, where you can get to things very easily. There also is a My Workspace, uh, shared calendar, documents, and those type of things as part of this. And if you're an administrator, also uh, you will see this, and this is where you actually do administration of the application itself. So that's a quick tour of the staff portal. Um, before we get into things like incidents and other things, let's just take a look at what it looks like for the employee. So if I were an employee, I can get to the My Safety Portal or Safety Self-Service Portal from, let's say, your intranet or just uh, selecting it as an application in your Office 365 applications. And if I go to Safety, it will take me to the employee portal. Let's take a look at that. Okay, here is the My Safety Portal, um, and this is really what the employee would see. In fact, um, I'm, I'm signed in as part of the safety team, so there's a couple things that um, the employee wouldn't see here. They would not see this uh, menu structure. They could go right back to the um, intranet, or they can, you know, basically come back to this page. But this is really set up for um, self-service for the employee. It's set up so that you can communicate to the employee. So here's department news uh, here that is put in. You can also have announcements uh, up here as well. You can even have department contacts and you can even post events here. But the most important part of this is really um, the ability to add new incidents, uh, add new observations, make service requests to the safety department, um, uh, have a knowledge base, so hopefully they can answer their own questions, and get to uh, different documents such as policies, procedures, and so on with a simple um, browse and search capability uh, across the pu public safety department documents that you presented to um, the employees there. So uh, this is the employee view and we'll even see that as part of the digital workplace if I were to go back to that uh, intranet up here we'd see that it actually rolls up the department um, uh, uh, news as well so that you can actually bring important safety information up here too. So let's go back to the My Safety Portal and take a look at how somebody could actually, for instance, put in a new observation or an incident. Now, by the way, everything you see here also is mobile capable so that they can actually do everything you're seeing in this um, through a mobile view using the SharePoint mobile as well. So if uh, an employee wants to log a new incident, they can do that very easily right here through the, the incident tracker. Now, the other thing too is to know uh, I am signed in as part of the safety department. Our forms are also audience-based, so they, the uh, typical user will not see these um, components here. They can basically have the information that they need to uh, log an incident, and uh, it automatically recognizes who it is uh, and uh, incident types. Uh, you can also cross-reference areas such as an area or a machine or something like that. Uh, the location, individual affected, and so on. So you can see this is your typical incident information 
that is put in here. Uh, we do have dynamic forms and you can also uh, attach pictures or any documents related to it. Um, the forms here are dynamic so for instance if there was no first aid administered uh, it, it would automatically disappear. There's witness information, post-incident uh, information as well, and information on the affected uh, individual that gets filled in. And they hit save, and what happens is it automatically um, sends a confirmation email and alerts the safety staff that a new incident uh, has been submitted. Also, users can keep track of the incidents that they have put in um, by looking down at the My Reported uh, Incidents. They can also track their observations here, and they can submit observations just like they could with incidents uh, with the new observation. The service request is, is simply uh, requesting services of the safety department. Perhaps it's uh, setting up training for a department uh, or uh, getting more signs or those type of things uh, from the safety department to post uh, in uh, the individual that's asking for this is department. So it's pure service request uh, as well. And as I mentioned, you also can get to useful documents. They can just press here and it will bring up the documents library. Looks like we haven't put anything in there yet, but this would be uh, folders such as policies, procedures, forms, those type of things, and they can search this uh, at any time. So as a summary, this is really where your uh, the rest of your organization, employees, and end users um, can interact with the safety department uh, as well. So let's go over and take a look at the safety staff side and delve into some of the business processes such as incident tracking and so on. Now back uh, as part of the staff portal, and again I have to be a member of the staff to do this, um, I can go in and again see in, any information that I need. Again, remember I can do this through um, Teams as well. I can even look at incidents through here. Uh, I can track projects with Planner, look at files, and have discussions as well. Because this is uh, part of the digital workplace on Office 365, you can access it through Teams uh, and or through SharePoint. But let's go back to the staff portal here. Let's take a look at incidents and what is involved there. So we can take a look at all incidents and we just have a few of them in here, but you can go in and look at incidents from many different views. I could look at just my incidents, incidents by status, incidents by month, by departments, uh, or by area uh, as well. So these are all things that are already set up, and you can view uh, these in many different ways. I'll go back to all incidents here. And I can also go in and sort, filter, and you notice that there's overdue uh, signals here and so on. So there's some nice formatting that can happen. And uh, again, I could go in and say, look, I just want to see uh, only accidents and go in and filter uh, by accidents. So it gives you a very flexible way uh, to go in and um, look across incidents, do different types of reporting. We've also done um, some reporting. Um, I'll clear that so we get all of them back. And um, we've done some reporting by, for instance, OSHA uh, regulatory type things, an OSHA 300 report, and so on as well. But let's take a look at uh, an incident here. So here's one, uh, if I take a look at this one. In this case, uh, a worker fell off the loading dock and uh, was reported by Tom Franz and we've got some information here looks like Linda Trimble put did some first aid on it and so on and uh, uh, for this incident here's the affected uh, individual and it looks like it was Tom Franz himself um, so these are kind of the safety information here and you can also report on non-employee things of if it's a contractor um, but the safety staff tab this is what's limited to the safety staff and users can't see this but this is where you can assign it to be investigated uh, there is a work log and everything in the work log is date and time stamp so if I put in a note here that says uh, you know check on um, employee compliance list um, was Tom trained correctly? Okay, there is also a tab for um, an in investigation report here, and it's the root cause was 
sufficient insufficient worker training uh, and we also have a thing here that says was have we validated that uh, it was corrected uh, as well so there's different classifications here for reporting um, the action items are actually a separate work list that is the corrective actions and we can see that uh, Tom Franz was scheduled for safety retraining that's why it's not um, uh, actually uh, checked off as verified yet because the training hasn't happened and anytime you want to add new corrective actions think of these as tasks or work related to it you can click here and add a new corrective action uh, and assign it to the incident here and so this is a action type you can assign it to somebody and have a work log on those actions and you can see the status here um, you can also have incident files here uh, you also saw that uh, in the very beginning here in the incident information, there is the ability to um, put in attachments just by clicking here and uploading an attachment. And again, all this can be done through um, the uh, uh, mobile view as well. So um, I, I'll go ahead and cancel this. That gives you an idea of what happens with incidents. And we'll go and take a look at uh, another area here. And that is... Um, observations and observations is another kind of trigger uh, for corrective actions but this is obviously proactive and is very important to your proactive safety uh, strategy here so uh, if we take a look at these and uh, here's one somebody reported a no capacity sticker um, on a forklift that's pretty detailed but it's interesting and um, that uh, they found that this is really key to bringing in the rest of the organization and to be able to report these things as well so again this is much simpler it's really just reporting on an observation this is uh, and who reported it. it was submitted by uh, this person and then actions taken here is actually an actions log and again you can create another action here as well related to this so um, that is act, uh, observations and again you can go in and report on observations uh, see all different types of observations by submitters, by department, all of that as well, too. Um, other department resources here is we do have service requests. Uh, this is another area here that, you know, I need a safety briefing for my department. Uh, perhaps it's overdue. That was uh, actually requested by um, the Daryl Trimble, and it's assigned to uh, Jim Russo. So in this case, again, it, the difference here is it's not a trackable um, occurrence such as an incident or an observation, but it uh, is a service request uh, as well, which can be assigned. And we don't have time. We won't go deeply into that. I suggest you get a perhaps schedule a live demo of the product. Um, the other thing that is nice about it is um, we also have areas and items so we you saw that we cross reference to forklift there or that type of thing and when we look at any area or item um, and we edit uh, this you'll see that you can track all activity related to that so uh, any incidents related to this forklift uh, as well uh, no incidents there uh, any hazards uh, there was a hazard, and we saw that as an observation, and any corrective actions that have been assigned related to this item. And we can see uh, there has been some inspections that were scheduled. That's a recurring action, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, but also there was the corrective action related to the observation. So the nice thing is you can keep track of all the different areas or machines or whatever and see all activity uh, against those as well. Now we saw there something called recurring actions and um, for any area or item you can actually set up a recurring action such as inspections uh, to the forklift itself and um, or a recurring action uh, could be audits or that type of thing. So here's one forklift inspection and it's for this forklift and if we edit this we can see that we can actually set um, a, an interval. This is actually a template uh, for the action uh, as well and there's an X action date and uh, the interval of the action uh, also would be shown here too. So it allows you to actually create um, different um, recurring actions such as inspections or audits and those will be reflected in the action items that are created here and we can see the different uh, action items 
and we can do it by area. Uh, we can look at cross uh, all actions. I could also go in and look at what ones are just assigned to me uh, as well here and uh, track uh, due dates, when it was completed, and what it was cross-referenced to, you know, what caused the action, uh, action type here as well. So what we're doing is actually tracking observations, tracking incidents, um, and, and those type of things, but also the work activities that are related to correct them and cross-referencing everything so you can get a good picture of what's going on. If you are part of the staff, the nice thing too is you can always go into my workspace and be able to see um, everything related to you, all my incidents that were assigned to me to investigate, any action items uh, out here as well, or any tasks. I can also see any recent documents that I've been working on, and I can get right to my personal calendar, my planner, my email. And again, bringing up uh, my planner there, you can also integrate those with the um, uh, Teams. So here we have you know discussions, we have different files, and by the way, there's shared documents in the uh, thing where you can track forms and policies and those type of things you might be developing as a safety staff. Um, and you can also go and, of course, work from the safety portal here from within Teams. So we've looked at a SharePoint um, portal view, and you can also access it through Teams. Teams is really a collaborative overlay uh, over uh, SharePoint. And I could also go in and see planner projects uh, related to safety. If there's longer term projects that are going on, you have to track, you can use planner. And of course, you can still get to incidents and anything else from within the uh, Teams view of this. So that's a very high level overview. We didn't get into all the details and all that you have approvals and other things that are behind the scenes here, which we just really don't have time to right now. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what the safety department um, digital workplace application looks like. It brings in the collaborative aspect of it, the portals. There is a Power BI dashboard uh, related to this. And we're taking advantage of all the different services in Office 365 to build out this new next generation digital workplace application. So I invite you to actually see more. Uh, we do do live demos for you. There's a live demo link uh, on our site uh, related to the safety department. Hit that and we can actually schedule a detailed live demo uh, for you and your staff. Thank you very much. To learn more about SP Safety uh, or any of our digital workplace applications, visit www.spmarketplace.com. There you'll be able to arrange for online demos for you and your team, see videos of any of our other products that plug into that digital workplace, um, and really transform your Office 365 into a productive, collaborative work environment with SP Workplace Solutions.